This is the Electronic Church of God, Arizona, presenting the Lord's Care Ministry, provided by James Berg, narrated by Forrest Grote. Thank you. Welcome to April 24th, the first day of the week, the day of the sun, and our pagans call it Easter, another pagan holiday. If you look in your Bible where the old Bible says Easter, if you take a look at that, it says it only once. The name is Pasha, meaning Passover. And the Passover happened last Tuesday a week ago, and not and the Passover could never always fall on Tuesday or Sunday. Well, brethren, with that, let's get right on over into the Lord's care ministry. A year to keep your eyes on heaven, day 114 of the year 2011 and today we're going to study about overcoming greed and brethren I suggest you write the chapter and verse down on your pad and paper so you can go back to your own Bible and study the whole context at your own leisure you can start and stop this video study as you go along by using the pause button that's down here in the corner. That way you'll be able to find the chapter and verse and read along with us as we go along. Okay, let's get right on over into overcoming greed and to do that we'll go to 1 Timothy chapter 6 verses 17 through 19. And we'll start in 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 18. Be rich in good works. Give generously to those in need. Always being ready to share with others. Brother, people are read this, it's always telling you to reach into your pocket and give generously to those in need. But there's a more stronger meaning is ones that don't truly know the Word of God give generously to those. They are the ones in need. They need to know about the Word of God. We had so many traditional teachers out here that feed them slop, really. I'm going to put it right straight to a hard word. They don't teach the Bible. They teach the milk, the little suckers that people like to hear. Timothy says it's the tickling of the ears. They like to hear all the good things. Well, the Word of God is really the good thing. Give generously to the Word of God. Okay, back to the study. Greed is not a new concept. That has been around since the beginning of time. It was greed, the lust for something more, that brought down Adam and Eve in the garden. The children of Israel contently turned their backs on God in their lust for earthly treasures. And Jesus encountered its victims at every turn. When he was bit toppling over money, changing tables in the temple, or having dinner with money grabbers, tax collectors. He was staring into the back of rich young rulers, walking away with a full wallet and an empty soul. 
Ironically enough, it was greed that eventually sold him into the hands of Pilate. Today, greed continues to rear its ugly head at every opportunity. We all struggle with it. I have to remind myself daily that the joys of sacrifice and contentment far outweigh the thrills of the new car or status of a bigger house. I still tend to measure success in silver and self-worth by the number of zeros at the end of my paycheck. The rivers of materialism run so deep and rampant throughout society that at times it is all we can do to keep from drowning in it. So what we do? So what do we do about it? How do we keep our lust for possessions from taking control of us? How do we keep ourselves afloat in the middle of greed, fast rising tide? Part of the solution can be found in Paul's first letter to Timothy, First Timothy chapter 6, verse 17 through 19. Tell those who are rich in this world not to be proud and not to trust in their money, which soon will be gone. But their trust should be in the living God, who richly gives us all we need for our enjoyment. Tell them to use their money to do good. By doing this, they will be storing up their treasures as good foundation for the future so that they may take hold of real life. The most effective way to overcome greed is to begin using what we have for the good of others. That brings me back for teaching the Word of God. Don't be greedy and hold it all to yourself. Let it out. As the Bible says, don't put your light under a basket. Take the basket off. Now light means knowledge. So take the basket off. Take the covering off of your knowledge and spread it around. And just start focusing on future treasures in heaven instead of the worthless ones we have accumulated here on earth. That is how to take hold of real life. Do you find that it appeases your desire for things when you help others? What have you done lately to help someone else? What can you do to actively store up riches in heaven? Brethren, in God's word only do we trust, never in the tradition of men. Beware the tradition of men that make void the word of God. And brethren, don't make void the word of God. Do not hold what you know in you. Let it out. Spread it around to others. With that, brethren, you will be storing up your treasures in heaven. I don't say that, but your Bible does. And brethren, if you want to see the salvation, get down on your knees and ask the Father and the Son to forgive you for following the tradition of men. And ask Him to give you the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding the letter he sent to you that is found in your own Bible. Ask him to help you understand it. Well, brethren, we're going to close for today. And, brethren, look forward in the coming time where oh, we're going to try to put live streaming video out to you. Well, with that, brethren, just close for today. You all have a great and wonderful day. I know I will. God willing, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.